for example one, I want to solve this equation for x. So the way I'm going to do it is by distributing the one half into the parentheses. So what we get is a is equal to, okay, we have one half times 4x over 1 minus 1 half times 8y over 1. And if we simplify, so 2 and 4 are left over, the equation becomes a is equal to, okay, so here we have 2x and then we have minus 4y. So getting x by itself means we have to isolate the 2x. So I'll add 4y to both sides, and that gives me a plus 4y is equal to 2x. So as my last step, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. On the right side, those cancel, and I have my answer, x which is equal to a plus 4y all over 2. Now, we could have solved this for y. It would be a different equation, and the process would be exactly the same. For example 2, OK, here we have an equation with, uh, again, two variables. Here we have an x and a b. Um, this one's definitely more complicated. I'm trying to get b by itself, so there's a trick that we can do here, and that is to multiply everything out by distributing, but then put every term that has a b on the same side of the equation. So I'll, again, distribute the 2, I'll distribute this negative, and we get 6x plus 2b minus b is equal to negative 3xb plus 4. Okay, uh, maybe I'll combine some like terms. On the left we have 6x plus b is equal to, and on the right we can't do anything, but we have negative 3xb plus 4. So my approach now is to, let's say move everything with a b to the left. So this will stay, but I'm going to add this to the left side. That means all the b's will be on the same side. And everything that does not have a b, like this 6x, I'm going to, in this case, subtract it to the right side. So that is, I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. And at the same time, I think I'll add 3x plus b. Sorry, 3xb. Okay, here's what we end up with. On the left, we have b and we have plus 3xb. Those are not like terms, so they can't be combined. And on the other side, uh, we have 4, and we're subtracting 6x. So here we go. All of the terms with b are on the same side of the equation. Here's why this helps us. I can factor a b out from this term and this term. I'll write that as b, and I'll open up some parentheses, and I'll just copy down the other side. What is left over after you factor out this b is going to be a 1 and a 3x. And you can even check this. If you were to reverse this step by distributing the b, it would take you back to the previous step. As a final step to this problem, I can now divide both sides by 1 plus 3x. It'll completely cancel those two parts as they are the same. And what is left over is b. And on the right side, we have 4 minus 6x divided by 1 plus 3x. And this would be the final answer, this thing right here. So again, that's kind of a trick. The trick being multiply everything out, and the thing you're solving for, every term that has it, in this case the b, put it all on one side of your equation. In example three, I'd like to find, um, in this case, the length of a base of a trapezoid. And at the top, 
we have this formula that gives us a relationship between the area of a trapezoid versus its height and the length of the two bases. So on this trapezoid that I've sketched, what I'm going to do is draw in what H, A1, and A2 represent. So H is the height, and again, that's your vertical distance from the bottom. Now A sub 1 and A sub 2, those are referring to either this longest part on the bottom and then this part on the top. So again, A1 and A2 are what we call the bases, and H is that vertical distance that connects those. And here we have this equation that says the area of a trapezoid is the same thing as 1 half times the height times the sum of the two bases. So if our goal is to find, uh, let's say we're going to solve for, it could be either A1 or A2, but I'm going to call it A2. Try to have it make sense in this problem. I want to take the above equation and get A2 by itself. So my first step is going to be, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So we have 2A is equal to 2 times 1 half H times A1 plus A2. On the right side, since it's really a 2 over 1, those cancel, and we are left with 2A is equal to H times A1 plus A2. I think now I'm going to divide both sides by H. You could distribute the H, but I think dividing both sides by H will do the same thing for us. So we get 2A over H is equal to A1 plus A2. And to get A2 by itself, I'm just going to subtract A1 from both sides. So it's going to look like a mess a little bit, but we have 2a over h minus a1 is the same thing as a2. Now, how does this help us figure out a2? Well, within the question, we have all the values for area, which is given to be 40 square inches. I'll leave the units off for now. Uh, the height, h, which is 5 inches. And I'm saying one of the bases is 10. I'll call that A1 since I'm solving for A2. If we plug these values into this expression, it'll tell us the value of A2. So let's do that. We have 2 times area, which is 40, all divided by the height, which is 5, minus A1, which is 10. This is going to be the value of A2. So we just have to simplify the left side. Let's see, uh, 5 goes into 40, we get 8, we have 2 times 8, which is 16, minus 10, or just 6. And this is the other base of our trapezoid. And for our last example, uh, here we have, again, that formula that connects Celsius degrees to Fahrenheit. And I want to know, if we have 81 degrees Fahrenheit, what is that equal to in degrees Celsius? So here, again, our given equation, it's not written in the most useful way. It's written for you plug in C and you solve for F. I want to switch it around. I want it set up so that I plug in F and solve for C. What this means is I have to take F is equal to 9 fifths C plus 32, and I have to solve for C. Okay, and we have all the techniques to do that. You could, let's say, start by subtracting 32 from both sides, which gives me F minus 32 is equal to 9 fifths C. And I think in one step, I can now get C by itself. The way I'll do that is by, I see I have 9 fifths. I know if I multiply this side by 5 ninths, it'll cancel it to just give me C. But anything I do to the right side, I also have to do to the left side. So, okay, those cancel. And I think I'm going to leave it just like this, where it is 5 ninths F minus 32 is C. 
That's a fine way to rate this expression. I just wanted it so C was all by itself. My goal now is to, all right, well, if I take 81 degrees Fahrenheit and put that in place of F, it'll give me the value for C. So let's do that. 5 ninths times 81 minus 32. That's going to be degrees Celsius. Okay, so we can do some of this arithmetic on a calculator just because I don't think it's going to come out to be an integer. But, you know, we have 81 minus 32, which is 49. So that's 5 ninths of 49. And so I'll just multiply by 5 and divide by 9. And here's what I get. I get 27 point, well, it's a decimal that goes on forever, but I'll round it to just 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. So what all this work says is, if you have 81 degrees Fahrenheit, that's exactly the same thing as this. Really just say approximately, but we rounded, but those are in fact the same.